Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, this time with Dorian, and we're going to be talking about ES-12 in Tokyo on ServiceNow. All right, yeah. Yeah, definitely a super awesome topic. Um, <laughs> last week, they did the the, ha- the live coding happy hour on it, and so Earl and team just dove right in, did a ton of examples and really showed some cool stuff with business rules and showing it working. I figured we'll just, you know, continue where they left off, show some cool things, answer some questions and and kind of explore it together. Sweet. Hey, is that your new chair? Uh, this is my new chair. Nice. Uh, but but I can still I can do the you know the, the standing desk as well if we if we really want it. Ooh, uh, look at you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm standing. I I, yeah. I feel like it does. It works better for me to to do the standing while we do these shows because it just I don't know. My desk is so wiggly. I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my mine wiggles too. So, it's, so <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, so I figured I'll kind of start us off. I'll do some background scripts, some scope dApps, and then if you maybe if we have time, we'll do some widget stuff as well to to kind of see how all that works. Yeah. 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 Cool. So uh, a couple things to kind of get people started. Uh, what is ES6, if they've heard that term, or ES7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Wait, wait, um, what about Emacs? Yeah, so, so <laughs> ES is just the short version for the, the Emac. Um, but Emac, and it's like 2015, and it happens every year. So 2016, yeah. 2017, 2018. The downside is the years don't actually perfectly line up. Um, so like es12 you would think it'd be oh 2022 but it's actually 21 so that that may just be a little confusing um but uh essentially what what this this big feature is really about is for the longest time service now behind the scenes uses rhino and rhino supports up to the emac 2015 standard and in the 2016 and beyond, so ES6 and beyond, the standard uh, uh, changed a lot. <laughs> and yes. uh, and so that pretty much made like a lot of the Stack Overflow stuff out of date. I mean, they, they, they pretty much brought a lot of the good stuff from Java, from other languages into the, the official uh, Emac standard, so the official standard of JavaScript. Um, and so we'll kind of show what I'll, what I'll first do is show you where can you find good information. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of that, trying to you're right, trying to find stuff. You're like typing in vanilla JS or just plain JS, trying to figure out how to write scripts <laughs> to yeah. do things. <laughs> because, you know, um, I think you turned me on to this a while ago. The uh, what was it? Uh, Babelfish. Babel. Yeah, yeah, Babel, and then the, and then they discontinued yeah, <laughs> the ES, uh, the old ES stuff, so you couldn't you couldn't uh, convert it. <laughs> I think it was oh, I can't spell transpiler, but I think it was yeah, like it was something like this, right? Where yeah. you could you know write uh-huh. code and but they disabled a couple of the older ones, older ones, yeah, and so, so, so you this couldn't. It's really good, <laughs> and it's still useful, um, yes. but it's probably yeah. less useful uh, or. Is not as much needed um, because ServiceNow said every year they're going to update this. So that's really, be super awesome mm. because a lot of the infrastructure they built. Um, so rather than waiting for Rhino, they essentially built their own um, compiler that will oh, nice. you know, try to keep up with it. Oh, and, that's really great. And so we'll kind of just start with some docs, and and I'll put this in the um, uh, in the link in the description. But like, here's a great one that tells you the difference between six and five. So if you ever wanted to like find a new thing in six or you're like, let me just kind of explore and we'll use a couple of these examples like, you know, constants, right? Like it actually shows you how you would have done it in in five um, and also in six. So um, so this is a really good one. The ES6 features, it only has ES6 features. So there's actually more than that um, in the newest one. So here's another one, and it's it's a little hard to read sometimes, but essentially it goes from five. So if you if we look at five's features, these are you know five's features, and this is from 2015. When you go into six, right, they have a ton of new ones. Um, 
<laughs> and I don't actually know which engine service now uses, but I, I, I don't think that's going to apply in most cases for everybody or it's going to be an issue. But then you could see like there's new things past 2016 that you also get access to. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So this is like a really good one. And probably the best one that I found is there's this GitHub page um, by Sud, and uh, I don't know who Sud is, but he has this awesome cheat sheet, which goes through each of, it tells you the dates that they've come out. Um, and so notice here that like ES10, the, 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 uh, um, the numbering isn't the same, but it, it goes through an example. Like if you wanted to, to use Ooh, sets, arrow functions, yeah, arrow functions, and, and they just kind of give you an example. Um, and what's super awesome, and, and I'll show you, we'll just copy this into background scripts and, and, and play around with it to test. It. So, uh, and then lastly, just if you want to learn about the class syntax, because classes are kind of a, an interesting thing that we'll talk about, um, especially because we did this whole like five part thing on script includes. Yes. This brings like another option that you could start using and that's using out of the box JavaScript classes. So we'll, we'll throw an example in there. So I'll throw these in the description, but these are the ones that I find are the most useful. Um, um, so, so yeah, so let's jump right in. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip the part where you actually create a scoped app, but so this currently only works in scoped apps and we'll show yes. you how, how you can turn that on uh, a lot. Of, there's going to be lots of documentation on lots of people telling you how to turn it on. Um, once you've already created an app, it, either a new one or on a Tokyo instance, you can open the app and then go to settings and inside the application settings, you will see the option to switch it to, uh, to 2021 version. And in the future, it'll be like a yes, 13, 14, 15. Like, so they'll, they'll, they'll release those as we go. And that's it. Once you turn that on, it should be backwards compatible. And it also should support um, future, um, future features. It may not support everything. So I think in the, in the live coding happy hour, they talked about promises won't be supported. And I think that's okay, knowing that um, most of this transpiles to the, the EVM and into Java, and they, they do a pretty good job of telling you what is sync and what's not sync uh, in, in service now. Um, so one thing that they didn't get to show on the live coding happy hour was how would we use this in global? Uh, and so let's say you wanted to, to have your, to write some, uh, to utilize some ES12 things in global. Well, what you could do is create a scoped app create a script include, and then just set the accessible from all application scopes. So when you do this, this every time you call you know, your, your scope thing, it will run. And so that'll, let's do that as our first test. Um, so essentially what I have here is. Well, while you're showing that, I just want to shout out again to my favorite person, Arnud, with yeah. SNUtils. Uh, oh, you don't have it installed. I do um, have it installed. This is it's, it's definitely here. Where's your link though? You should have a link up there where it says run script that uh, lets you open it in v VS Studio. Uh, maybe it's an old version one. Run and it, it lets you save it real time and run it from VS Studio. I mean, it, it'll show the results here on this page, but it's pretty, pretty handy. Yeah. So let's let's go with um uh testing this so awesome my function awesome and so I, I wrote this you know script called awesome and all this is doing is in this function cool i'm using an es12 feature so not even just an es6 that this is replace all essentially replace all will find any word all and replace it with the word most of and then just in, uh, output it so relatively simple so we're gonna do ooh, and John is not telling me I have to keep up with chat. Uh, hey guys. Oh. <laughs> um, so awesome, and it didn't take, and uh, it was a function, and then we had a function called cool, right? So, right, awesome, function called cool, no variables. We're gonna minimize that for now, and we're gonna run it first in its scope. And it replaced the word all, all over the place. Now we're going to change scopes to nice. global. Now we're in global. Uh, so imagine you have a business rule or, or something in, in global and you want to access some of the ES12 features. 
and oh well that's because this part isn't uh, and here we go so I can still do the the same thing um, and, and so that that just shows you a way that like even though it's not accessible directly in global as you saw from my little error there you can write all your codes in a scoped app you can even call it like your you know ES12 scripts or something like that <laughs> And no, that's awesome. That I can see how that would be super handy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so let's, if if we can, what I'll do is let's dive into a little bit of some uh, the class object because what we've shown here is this is the default way you normally do classes, but prototypes is actually a very old school way of of doing things. Um, versus just using a, a class. So if you remember from some of our older videos, we essentially um, uh, we essentially uh, showed you different methods or different ways that you can you know, write script includes. And so here's an example where we actually are creating a, a class and the constructor, if you've never used Java or JavaScript, JavaScript um, Further is essentially the like initialize method or the methods that essentially you can you can call uh, with this, and and then there's notions of setters and getters. So the idea is you can set a value or set a, a part of the object. So this would be setting the width. This is this is the way you would get the width. Um, setting a height, getting the height, and then you can now get um, the area. So this class is a rectangle and we want to, you know, you know, do all of these things with it. And so I'll walk through what, what we have here. First, uh, a really fun thing to note is before you could have a bunch of vars um, that had the same name in uh, ES12, it'll tell you an error. It's saying, Hey, mm. you, you've defined this multiple times. So uh, like, don't do that. <laughs> uh, so, so that's, that's good. Um, for, for sanity purposes. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using that constructor of width and height right here um, and passing it in. Cool was the name of this. And I'm just passing in the, the width and the height of two and four. And then I'm going to print out the width and the height. And then I'm going to say, is the area of this rectangle? So is it is this math of multiplying width times height equal, uh, equal to uh, 1,000? It's going to return false. Then I'm going to show you how those sets and gets work. So notice here, all I'm doing is just dot, like it's kind of like that dot notation because of set and get is special. When you do have sets and gets, you can just directly set them. And then I'm going to check if the area uh, is uh, is the same again. Does that does that kind of make sense, John? Yeah, yeah. And um, is there a reason why you use the triple evaluator? Like, are you, I, I know that it evaluates on the value and the type. Type, yeah, that's that's essentially why I was using it. But like, I can, I can do that for you. Well, I, it doesn't matter to me. I, I only brought it up just in case other people weren't sure what the triple mm -hmm. equal signs represents and how it works. Yeah, totally. Um, and so uh, here, here's where we ran it. Notice I passed in a two and a four. That's why the width and the height is that. I checked if the, uh, the area is uh, a thousand. It wasn't. Then I set using those setter functions, um, then to be fifty and twenty, and now I get a thousand, which is results in true. And you can see that now that object has been has been set. Um, and then I just printed out what that object looks like, so you can kind of see it, right? So that's an example of how you could write script includes, create classes, JavaScript classes, and then call and utilize those. I find it humorous that you use boo also. <laughs> it's one of those things I'm always like sending up just to make sure something's responding. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of in a nutshell. You know, we talked a little bit about the script includes on how you can actually use classes now, which is which is really awesome. We talked about how if even if you just use the old school one and we showed our first, you know, using ES12 uh, example. So now what I was kind of going to go through is just some other cool stuff that you can use now. Um, so 
So the first one is around, uh, and I'll, I'll show it up here, is these block scoped variables. Uh, and so what that means is essentially if you set A up here and then you try to set it here, it's going to say that this A is different. <laughs> so this A is going to be set, um, but it's going to be a different place in memory than this A. You with me, John? Oh, because it's uh, encapsulated in that if in, statement. In, in that if statement. So it's, it's blocked. So if I run this, oh, let me, let me cancel out some of these to make things easier for us, right? So notice that the two is there and the one's there. And yeah. just in case you're, you haven't seen JavaScript at all, let and const are the new things. Um, lets are essentially pointers that allow you to change that, uh, the, the value of them. Const would, would make it immutable and, and then you can't change it. So most times you want to use const if yeah. like you're just defining something and it's never going to change and then use let if that value is constantly going to be changing. So yep, so that's kind of blocked and, and it's also similar for not only variables but functions and this is like super gnarly. Like you have a function foo returns one, it checks it. And then you, within um, you know, some, some sort of brackets or something, you write foo again and return it, it's going to return true here, and then this is going to return true again, um, so because this one is 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 blocked. So I, I wouldn't recommend uh, <laughs> utilizing these things because it's going to be very confusing. Um, yes. But, but just know that, that you may start seeing different experiences if you aren't correctly taking into account block scopes. Um, so moving along, uh, a, a nice, you know, just quick and easy new feature in ES12 um, is this replace all. So if you ever wanted to, you had a string and you wanted to replace it all, which we, which I showed in that other script, uh, you can now uh, utilize, you know, a really easy function. So instead of all of the world's age, most of the world's stage, right? So. Yeah, I think what you used to have to like either loop through it with the replace or do some sort of uh, regex to find them all. And <clears throat> so yeah. that is nice, a single line. Yeah, and it's not in this one. It's in, let's go back to the top and let's find it in here. So look at us using this doc, replace all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so before it, you'd have to do like a yeah. replace and, you know, regex it or, yep. um, but this is just whoop, replace all. I know. I, I, yes, I'm so excited about that one because I've had to do so many, so many regexes to replace. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's get into like some mind bender stuff uh, with creepy <laughs> and, and falsy. So uh, I'll, we'll do a little quiz, John. Have you ever seen this? Uh, no. That that is before? that is a new one to me. What is yeah. that? And so there's also. Just to, to show, there's the the or or equals. Oh boy, and this and looks so, fun. And so what this is saying is return this uh, return this value or set this value if the thing uh, if if this on the left hand side is uh, uh, is is truthy. Yes. So if empty string is truthy, set it to bar. Correct. And so empty string is falsy. Right. <laughs> and I didn't make up these words. <laughs> it's really <laughs> called truthy and falsy. Uh, and so in this case, it will return uh, the, the empty string because it's falsy. So it's a shorthand way of doing an if statement, really. Or a tertiary, I guess, a ternary. Yep. yep. Yeah. OK. And then, but foo, for example, in this case, is truthy. Right. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna set it to to bar. And then I'm like, guess. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say I'm guessing the uh, or the or or equals is just opposite of that. If it's truthy, set it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> if if one of these things are truthy, uh, set the truthy option essentially. Right. And if if it's the first one, it'll set the first. If it's the second, it sets the second. So 
mind bender one, I know. Um, but yeah, well, so but it's, it's not really. It's just easier way to write an if statement to check truth or non-truth. <laughs> Yeah, and, and truthy and, and falsy is useful because a lot of the times you'll see expressions where it's like if it exists and and it's uh, an em not an empty string and and right. you know, yes what yeah type of object is right like <laughs> it, it, you wrote you had to write these all these if statements with a lot of different checks in order to to kind of keep it yeah so, yeah um, or you'd start you'd start uh, grouping them like you know is it not empty and then do another group inside of that just because you didn't want to load it all up in one line because your else's may have gotten messed up you know yep. so this one's a, a little fun one you can't use commas but you you can have really big numbers um so i think this is called a uh, big uh something i don't know if it's big, big number <laughs> big int yeah uh, maybe, maybe, big float it's, no it's Oh man, I can't remember which one. Uh, lo, uh, numeric separators, that's what this one's called. So essentially what this is saying is if you need to write a really big number, uh, you can use an underscore to separate it and it will still keep the actual number. Why would you know I how, need that? You no, know, in Just... English, when you write 9,000, it has a comma in it. Right. This is saying like separate on, <clears throat> on these parts. Is that just readability really for you as a, you know, as you're looking at the code, is that? Um, yes. Okay. Here you go. All right. <laughs> very helpful to read large numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was just wondering, I'm, I was sitting there, I'm like, when would I use this? If, I, mean, I guess if I have a really large number, I need to know if it's a billion or a trillion or, you know, yeah. whatever comes after that, I guess. I think it's like, if you're thinking of in like, you know, if you write milliseconds a lot, like being able <laughs> yes. to, to know if it's a millisecond or a nanosecond or something. Yeah. Like, I feel like this stems from someone getting really annoyed at large numbers. They're just yeah. sitting there one day going, man, this is dumb. I need a way to separate this so I know what I'm working with. Totally. <laughs> um, um what it was this one so this was another one for oh match all nice match all yes okay so match all is new um and essentially what this will return got to go to our handy match like uh, this site is so awesome uh, <laughs> so essentially what this is doing is it allows you to i mean there's a couple things this array from right and the arrow we're using but uh, the idea is it will match all of the the uh, the groups. So right, it's going to match you know these four groups in this case based on this regex, and then you can do something with that, right? You can write a little quick function that you know uh, checks um, you know the, each part of the array and then prints it, right? So um, so that's all this is doing, and and you'll see that it it returned those those four for if you need to get all of the successful matches. So that was some, you know, quick, you know, and, and honestly, like we could, we could go through this like whole thing. If there's something specific that you wanted to talk about, like if we, we should look at error, the arrow function. So I know this okay. has come up in cask. There's, there's different opinions on arrow functions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll show you what this talks about for arrow functions and we could just, to show you the, the ease of it. Um, so arrow functions are essentially an easier way or uh, a more stylized way to, to write functions. Okay. Um, so normally you would have some expression like this. So this is like previously uh, uh, ES25 where you, you name the function, you, you say it's a function, you pass in the variables, and then you do some sort of return. Um, the arrow function is saying, hey, we don't need all that boilerplate. We're, we already know that you're going to create a function. You're just going to tell us how many variables it has or what the variables is, and then you're going to tell me what it does. So this is um, one example. This is probably the, an, an easy one. So let's, let's, just, let's just copy this in to kind of use this as our example. Um, right. And... 
and just know every time you see console log, just change it with gsf.info. Um, so, so yeah, so, so that works. Now, what's uh, a really cool thing is if you only had one uh, variable, you don't even need these parens anymore. So you could do something like that. Mm. Um, so if you have a static value, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, or or you're doing other things like if you just have one variable, you don't need the the parens, and so that will that'll work as well. So that's you know one variation of that. Um, so you probably will see lots of variations. And here is a great let's list out all the variations, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we kind of showed, I just showed this one, right? Like if you have mm -hmm. one variable, you just need to, to have it. Notice there's no return here. Um, if you have multiple parameters, but a single statement. So we, that was our first example. So we've shown both of these. If you have a single parameter and multiple statements. So we have, uh, we, we have this one, right? So what this is saying is the, the biggest difference here is still the one parameter is first and then we're showing we're, we're putting it all in in brackets to to say that this is now the body that we're going to work on it's no longer a single statement and then it just looks like any other function right imagine this is the start of your function so let's copy this one and oh while you're writing that out dimitri sent or dimitar sent us a a message and and yeah you're correct it, it will be much easier to use stack overflow now um because yes. yeah instead of trying to find all the make sure your dates are like pre 2015. yeah it was, that, <laughs> that's definitely to it's gonna stuff. save so much time uh for, yes. for, for people um, yeah so let's just change these gs infos I feel like I just need to create a browser extension at any time I see console.log. <laughs> so, you know, you say that someone uh, someone on LinkedIn turned me on to user scripts in oh. the browser. Um, I haven't had a chance to really get into them, but they seem really cool. So this is, to I think this is totally something you could do with a, a user script to, to yeah. just do that for you. Yep. So here's, you know, still a valid, you know, case, right? We're passing in five. If the five mod two, so that's you know, using the, the mod function, checks if there's a remainder or not. If there mm -hmm. is a remainder, um, then it's odd. If there's no remainder, it's even. So, but this is actually wrong, right? So if- If, if mod is this, two is, no, that's- is, Oh, it's zero. It, yeah, if you passed in a four, it would come out even. If you passed in yeah, a five, it should come out yeah. odd. Yeah, but look at oh. what it says even. So I don't know if this example code. Wait, why why would it? But this is returning zero though. That's why I don't understand why they wrote this one this way. So this returns like zero, right? So like if you like if you just do GS info five uh, or five mod two. Oh, that should return one. Yeah, I was gonna say that one is, one is true, and then it's saying that it's even. But that's not the case that we want. That's broken. <laughs> this is an what, example, right? Is like what? Why is that broken? Because that should be. This should. Uh, this should be odd. No. No, I it shouldn't be. It should be even. Um, Write it out as a normal function and see if it works. No, but like I, I, I'm, I'm already showing like, so like var. Uh, yeah, no, equals, I, uh, I get it. It should two. be, it should have come out as. And then if foo, you know, yes, that info uh, odd. Oh, wait, so this is a one. Or actually, I'm just going to print foo. Uh, so this is, if if this is one, it should return this else. Yes, that info. Zero. Yeah, but that's written differently than the the it's other the one, though. I think. Right, like I think the issue is like the this is returning one, and they didn't account for that. And if it returns one, it's not an even number. <laughs> it's only <laughs> if it's zero. Is it an even number? 
So this should be like, should be, because uh, because one is truthy, right? Because if if you do one here, right? Yeah. If if it if because zero is falsy. Is falsy. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry too much about like the bad example here. <laughs> the function method, you should it, seen like, you should send Sud a a remark yeah, and say, hey, I, your should, your uh, example is broken. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'll work with other ones, right? But it's just like, I don't know why he chose that one. Um, okay, so multiple parameters and multiple statements. It's pretty much identical to the previous one, except you just need to remember to put brackets or, or friends around it, right? So relatively, relatively simple there. And no parameters right and well I, I like how he says multiple parameters and multiple statements but there's really only one statement <laughs> what he means is multiple line oh oh okay <laughs> yeah, yeah but there's two statements right there's a, a check here and then a return here right so, uh, okay i'll i'll give you that <laughs> yeah so so that's kind of the arrow function super cool um yeah it should make your life easier it, once you do five, 10, 15 of them, it'll it'll kind of come naturally to you. Well, I think that's what's going to happen, you know, uh, by by the midpoint. So whenever, you know, mid, uh, six months after Tokyo release, I think you're going to start seeing a, a huge change in what people service are writing. Now. Service now. You yeah. Well, even, even service now. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't started it, but I, I think you're going to see this change and it's just going to, the whole, you know, the whole ecosystem is just going to shift mm -hmm. and everyone's going to follow suit and it's going to be awesome. That's just going to take some learning curves, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we could go on down the list and enhance oh. object literals. So before, if you wanted to instantiate something mm -hmm. like this, yep. uh, for an object, you'd have to set the key and the value. But in this case, you just need to, to set it and it will, it'll know it. As long as your as long as your keys are the same, right? Co correct. Yeah. If you want A to yeah. be A, B to be B, C to be C. Yeah. Um, but normally, you, you see this a lot with like object properties are often created with the same name, right? So that's to kind of keep track of that. So so, that's so let me ask you this, Dorian: How much or how many times or how long do you get stuck on naming things? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that one's a good one. I, I mean, I go back and forth. I, I think if uh, memory issues were a thing, then like you, you get the like hardcore performance people like name things super small yet a little bit relevant, and it really depends. If the thing yeah. that you're you're naming is actually super important, then it should have a good name. If it's only being used temporary in one place, it actually doesn't matter what the name is. So. Like that's kind of the, well, I, yeah. The go I, I just, yeah, I see this as helping some of that because there are times where I'll get just, I'll just be like, I'll go blank. I can't come up with a a proper or a key, you know, and I'm just like, oh come on, yeah. This sure does help that for sure. Um, what else? Um, oh, in an object. So there's a lot of changes within like objects got enhanced, right? So within an object, if you needed to have a function um mm -hmm. you can you can now like make that look a lot cleaner um so rather than s s saying it's a function you just you write the the key or what would normally be like a, a key right as the the function in the variables and then it's you know the, the same parts the same on the return so they just drop the word function remove the the colon nice um what other yeah i think is they there, talked about oh, well i was going to ask did they do anything with um looping because i think looping is a big they did a big performance thing that we get caught up on in service now especially on the server side because we don't we, we we don't normally have access to some of the helpers like you know uh underscore or low dash um yeah so i'll, I'll go over that one shortly the, the thing i wanted to touch that's super awesome is literal oh, like okay. template literals mm -hmm. like how oh, many yeah, times yeah. have we had to and i'll just copy and paste this one this one's like 
how many times have we had to write a multi-line statement? I'm think I'm talking to you, mail templates. Like <laughs> where <laughs> it was like John, and then it was like first name plus equals something else, you know, and plus equals plus equals plus equals. And oh my like, gosh, yes. You wanted to just write, and then there was like the new line, the famous new line, you know, somewhere in there. I know Marco, uh, who's on, has, has seen this before. And now you could just use uh, temp, uh, 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 template literals. So, um, so essentially, you know, if you wanted to write a multi-line or you wanted to like have a variable inside of this, um, that's already that's already set. Oh, you don't right? have to do you don't have to do um, the, the terminator like the plus, plus and the plus yeah, sign. Exactly. Okay. So nice. So this will, uh, this will now return it on a multi-line, right? And use your variable. So, oh, so oh my gosh, good on that... as well. Uh, well, that's... something. Oh no, either I lost John or I got lost. They get <laughs> you. I don't know if I lost John or not. A glitch in the matrix. Yeah. All right. So I, I think I'm still here. All right. John's back. <laughs> All right. You know, it's it's always that way. I think I think probably one of my kids is home oh, on nice. the internet playing games. Playing, playing games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So yeah. So that. Yes, that's the rationator. Good. A glitch in the matrix. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Totally. And uh, so yeah, so that's kind of you know just can be super useful, like yes. just being able to write one line thing without a bunch of pluses in it. Like even if it was just like a one liner like this, like super awesome, use the back ticks um, and, and totally uh, do the, the at symbol there. Um, uh, are you, you're not showing, are you? Oh no, I wasn't, but um, <laughs> yeah. So super awesome. Hey, look, it even talks a little bit about CSS in JavaScript, right? Um, so you oh, wow. Can, you can do some cool things like that. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into destructuring. That's like a whole topic on, you know, if you needed to extract values from, from objects, right? So like if you wanted to, if you had a user object here um, and you wanted to like essentially extract a key from it, you can set a variable to be that key, and then you could uh, extract that one. Same thing in um, uh, in setting arrays. So think of this as like, I mean, just the, the quick thing here. Um, think of destruct destructuring as like, I know I'm going to need these variables. So mm -hmm. when you're instantiating it or you're setting it up, already set those so that you can then access it. Um, so kind of keep that in mind with um, with destructuring. So definitely a shorthand, good one. So you yeah, wanted that, to no, that to, is nice. Oh, so you wanted to jump into looping? Yes, yes. I think this is a big one that I find I'm doing a lot of, and I can see the performance hits as mm -hmm. you know the more you do and the more records you get, mm -hmm. the bigger problems you run into. Uh, default params. I think someone else talked about this. Oh, the the rest parameter is or the spread operator. We we could we could talk about that at some point. The spread operator. So I don't know if you're gonna get uh, a ton of performance things, but there's a couple mm. things that we could we could talk about because um, there's like symbols, there's maps, there's sets, <laughs> there's there's a, there's obviously the array. Um, yeah, well, I think so, map map was already available to some extent. We 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 
but I don't remember it being available within server scripts. I know I did use it in client scripts quite a few, uh, quite it, a bit. It was in client, but it wasn't available in, in server side. So, oh, okay. And that's, I mean, this is like a, a super easy test, right? Because I love it. It's like, all right, cons who equals new map, right? So we'll see if this just, uh, or let, because cons can, can still work. So that, that works. We switch to global. Bam. Oh, wait. Uh, let's go bar. Yep. Mm. So won't let you won't let you do a map. Um, so so yeah. So definitely some you'll you'll definitely get performance improvements from maps. Um, there are special things about maps that are different than uh, than arrays. Um, yeah. And I think it was in the live coding happy hour they talked about the four. So normally when you used to write a, a function, it was something like uh, bar uh, equals a b c and four foo four let foo or let uh, le uh, and foo. And then just add info, Ellie. Your your keyboard is so clickety clackety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of switches are they? They're they're blue switches. Mm. Yeah. Didn't want to go with the cherries. No, but they're very <laughs> satisfying. Um, <laughs> so, what do you think this is gonna uh, return? Uh, well, this is the, let's see, let the game show down. test. Yeah, it should give me the iterator, the, I want to say the keys, but I don't remember. That is ES25 answer. So this, uh, so yeah, so zero, one, and two. So you got your keys. So basically the indexes or the, mm -hmm. yeah, the iterators. Um, I think actually, let me see if that doesn't run into difference. So they did make a change uh, on this one so that it will return the, the actual value. Um, but uh, I don't remember which which for loop that is. For of, of, that's it, that's it, oof, uh, of, there we go. So, hey. Oh, nice. <clears throat> and this won't work in, uh, oh, let's, bar, bar. Yeah, so that that won't work in that for loop, um, but it will work in in there. But this one does still work in in both. But you can can you get if you're doing the of can you get the uh, like if you do um, what is it l and then square brackets uh, foo you'll get um, yeah do a square bracket with foo on that I think. So that's how you would 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 normally do that, right? Yeah, um, I just want to see if that still works that way because I, I find myself doing that occasionally too. So, so that won't work in this case. Oh, right? because oh. it's foo of of a, right? I mean, we could we could cheat here and do like oh, set the set the iterators. But I, <laughs> like, but that's only a very small example. And don't, please don't mm -hmm. write this code. It's gonna definitely confuse <laughs> someone and think this is okay. <laughs> Definitely, definitely don't write it like this. Um, but so, um, what else? Uh, we get access to to generators. Um, not super good about those. So I'm gonna skip over. Probably very easy. Oh, let's talk about sets. Yeah, so let's do sets. This one is like really useful for duplicates, right? So if you ever, I feel like. There's been so many times where it's like, I just got a bunch of records and then I need to generate an array with certain values in it. And then I need those to be unique. <laughs> and then I would have to normally do like an if statement that checks if the value already exists in the array before adding it to the array. Um, so set just makes it like super easy um, because you get access to some fun things with set. Um, so we have this set, and I just need to console. Uh, oh, I can't do this. 
Info. Let's copy that a few times. All right. So essentially, it's if we were doing an array, it would add the two, right, multiple times. Um, it couldn't. It would also probably yell at you trying to to add an object, and uh, it actually probably wouldn't. Uh, no, you can you can add objects into an array pretty easily. Um, but this gives you a really nice way of checking the size. I guess that's similar to array.length, so nothing mm. there. But if you wanted to just see if a value exists, very simple as some value. Does so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get caught up on size here. Um, is size available to an object? Like if I if I instantiate an object, can I do object dot size? So you're you're talking about this object? Yep. And then uh, ob dot two equals one. And then ob dot size, right? That's what you want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think size works on on objects. Yeah. That's too bad. Just on arrays or just yeah. on sets. Uh, it also works, I think, on on maps. Um, so we could we could try that. Uh, new map. And I can't keep variables the same. Uh, yep. So we could do um, two dot two. Uh, ob. Uh, maybe size is something. There's probably maybe a, something different for it. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I <clears throat> I was just curious because you know object lengths sometimes are you know you gotta pro you gotta process through the object to get a length on it or to know what's in it. Yeah, I actually don't think I could JSON stringify a map. So we'll see if this yells at me. <laughs> Oh, I can. Ooh, nice. <laughs> well, what is a map? Is it basically an object or an array? What is it? It's it's very similar. Like, I think this was. I think Earl did a, a pretty good job of uh, uh, explaining it. Um, oh, God, I don't want any of these. <laughs> oh wow, this one is like mean. It makes me like <laughs> go through like, everything. Oh, all right, whatever. That's fine. Um, yeah. So. So the cool thing about maps is the keys don't have to be like a string, right? So like a key can be an object. Um, it could be, you know, another map. Um, so normally when uh, that's like one big difference. Um, mm -hmm. And then the order is preserved. Um, so in a map, like you remember a JSON object, you can never trust, you know, what order it comes in. Um, but maps, you can always trust uh, the way they, they, they come so um, so that's kind of the, the quick one on that um, what else we got a weak set well, that's cool oh here was maps hmm. oh there we go here was your keys for it um, and they even showed an example of in and versus of weak maps any other, um, there's probably symbols, which are which are probably good. Symbols essentially enforce uniqueness. Um, so you can, once something is instantiated and um, as, as a, a symbol, then uh, it, it will always, if you try to compare that to another thing that also looks like a, the same symbol, uh, it won't, uh, it won't work. So, um, so like here's an example, right? It creates a, a symbol of foo and checking if it's a, another, if it's equal to the symbol of foo. And hmm. that won't. That's interesting. So this is useful if you really need to check uniqueness of an object um, versus something newly created that looks like that object. Okay. Um, you know, saying it that way, I can see that I'm, I may actually use that because there are times where I compare objects you know, like when you're returning a record set and you want to make sure it's a different record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So that 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 could that could be useful for you for you know uniquely identifying um, those. Um, so yeah, do you, you maybe want to show? We have a few minutes. You know, 
getting some of this to work in a portal widget. Yeah. Did you, let's see, send, will you send me that link to that, that page so I can copy out some of those? Yeah. Let me make sure my widget is still up. And, and I, I will put all these links in the description as well. So highly recommend just keeping it bookmarked. <laughs> it's even if like you're like <laughs> some code for the first time you don't understand it, you could just like control find something here and it, they do a, a decent job of trying to explain it. Um, so yeah, there's so much. Yeah, no, I, I am definitely bookmarking this guy. Um, there's parse int. I feel like I, we used parse int a lot. There's probably something new. Did parse int get changed or is it still the same? Uh, it's still the same. Yeah, still the same. And I think ServiceNow made their own parse int as well. Oh, we got includes. That one works. Oh, that was finally. I feel like this would work sometimes. I don't know if anyone's ever tried. Like includes used to work, you know, some of these times, but it really didn't. Uh, no more index of John. Oh, uh, do you know how nice? I, and I know it's just kind of a shorthand way of writing, but man, that is so nice. <laughs> I would have to constantly ask myself, does index of equal equal negative one? Like it was just like this thing I had to remember in my head. Like, I, I always did what did I do? I always did like greater than or equal to zero. Cause I, I, I don't I don't trust negative one. Yeah. I always feel like it's a string or something. And so I never trust it. <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh, and it works on NANs. Interesting. Yeah, but I don't know if we get access to NANDs. Oh, well, <laughs> you can always check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna work in ServiceNow. But you're right, super easy while you're getting setting up. Let's try some NANDs. Hey, yeah, maybe that does work. But ServiceNow does a really good job of returning undefined uh, a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so NANDs. Nans are supported. Sweet. Was, was Nans always supported? I don't know what broke with this. Or uh, I think it includes. includes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, was Nans supported? Here the here's the uh, equivalent. So we could we could test that. I'm glad he gives the equivalent because it helps you read it and go, you know what, this is how I used to write it. Now I can write it this new way and see it. Yeah, totally. Um, because that was nice about Babel is you would just toss in your code and it would convert it for you, but you could see how the new way compared yeah. against your old way. Negative one was NAN was supported. So okay, nice. I feel like I've never used NAN. I've always just used undefined in certain. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of looking through other ones. I like, you know, object values. Um, some of this object stuff is quite handy that I wish was available. Like I, I, I've run into times where using like object values or object dot, what is it, dot keys and stuff like mm -hmm. that are problematic. You know, you can't, you can't really use them on the server side, but it's so handy to have available. So, so this one probably is, is definitely useful, right? Because I feel like we've always done four, four loops, right? Over objects. Yes. So you mm -hmm. can now, it looks like you can get values really easily. You can get entries, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, really. Easily. Uh, this object stuff is going to make a huge difference. Yep. Uh, Especially on the portal side. Um, Cause like I said, I, I run into this a lot. Oh, this is cool with like credit card stuff. String padding. I don't know if you've ever used that one. Oh, but that is nice. Um, if you wanted to like mask some stuff. Yeah. I guess if, if your company's storing credit card. <laughs> that's a whole different that's a whole different ball game though and but it's nice to have padding though i mean it doesn't have to be just card numbers but just think about you know maybe there's something to do with employee numbers that you only want to see the last four or something like that you know yeah and that, so it, it's sad that promises are not supported i i agree 
Um, but I feel like it's just promises are going to add so much complication um, to the, the state um, management of ServiceNow that I'm, I'm kind of okay that they, they aren't there for now. If you want to do like async stuff, it's like set it and forget it. And it's just like throw off a spin off a thread and, and you know, some hierarchical worker. Um, are you ready, John? Yeah, yeah, we can do, do wanna, some stuff. Do, do you want to share? Yeah, we can do that. Oh, we only have a minute, so maybe just throw up the screen and we'll, we'll do one quick one. All right, let me get it as an actual, its own thing. I think the only big one we didn't do is spread operators, but just like looking. There's also flat maps. Okay. Uh, let's see. Boom. There we go. All right. Um, Your screen is like, I feel like I'm blind trying to, to, to see this. Oh, John, John's crashed. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back to mine. <laughs> John's just, machine broke. Um, I didn't talk about flat maps, um, just some nice useful things rather than just reducing and concat. And I just disappear. It, yeah, well, you're, you're, you're back, John. <laughs> I moved the screen. Did me. I mean. Yeah, it's okay, John. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I think we did good. Maybe we do another session on, you know, portal widgets and, and yeah, ES12. we can do that. I think that's totally fine. There's probably some fun trimming. It looks like there's some options. Oh, what's in trimming? Um, you can just trim left or trim right. Uh, oh, nice. I, I, so I missed, you know, when I came, I used to do a lot of PHP full stack development. And, and the trimming that PHP had was so nice because you could do trim left or trim right, you know? It was so handy. I always miss that. Uh, we could do some sorting, some array sorting. Well, as a function, <laughs> that's cool. Well, you could do that before you just had to set it all up. Yeah. Um, it supports more JSON things like with the use, U characters. Uh, uh, interesting. I don't actually know if this private class variables will actually work, but that, that would be kind of cool. Big int, John, I know you needed these big ints. Uh, then I can use the, uh, the separator in that. So I don't, <laughs> so I don't get annoyed at the big numbers, right? Yeah. I actually don't know if big int will work. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we could we could try this. Uh, I, I don't know if they will support big int. Uh, I mean, it's kind of looking like it. Um, uh, nope, no big int for you, John. Well, I'll have to keep my numbers short. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> Payroll will be upset, right? When we can't use big numbers. I mean, these are really, really big numbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nullish cascading. Uh, I mean, there's probably some cool stuff here. Um, um, yeah, so that I think that's I think we're in a good place. Let's. Uh, yeah, there's. There is definitely a lot happening, a lot going on with all this new uh, JavaScript stuff for sure. Um, I'm excited. I'm happy for it because I think this is going to really help. Showed, what was your favorite? Uh, what was my favorite? Well, that's hard what to was, say. I really what surprised you the most. Those are my two questions. Oh. I guess that includes thing was kind of a. I didn't expect that to happen because I mean, index of is easy enough to write on its own, but includes just makes it that much easier. Because I always, you know, so I'll go back to like when I bought my first uh, programming book, the first pair, like the, you, you open the book and the first page was like, hey, developers are inherently lazy. That's 
how they work the best because they build things to make their lives easier. And so I see includes being <laughs> some yeah. some guy there working on JavaScript was like, this index of is too too much for me. I'm gonna create includes <laughs> and make my life easier. <laughs> I think the most surprising one for me was the like truthy falsy one. The oh, uh -huh. equals and or equals. Like I think I would constantly need a mind bender to think about it. Like what is this supposed to return? <laughs> yeah, I could and see that. Yeah. I think um I was trying to think. The other other ones that I think I'll use the most, I think the arrow function really will be like you know, or this, the, the template literals, like I really despise the plus everywhere. So I think the, the back tick is going to be a nice addition. Um, yeah, it is, I agree. Um, just because, you know, if something I was working on currently is really going to change over that, the problem is, is it's, it's global. And so I have to wait a little while on that one, but, uh, I think that makes a huge difference when you're, trying to put together stuff because you still use it on you know on widgets and whatnot sometimes when you're building out a, a long message mm -hmm. you know and I, I can see this being so much easier but i wonder if it's going to conflict though because you already in you're already kind of well i don't know i'd I think have to mail, see it. mail scripts mail scripts yeah mail scripts, like the amount yes. of print 10 lines you needed <laughs> on that like oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that that that's going to be a, a boon for people working in mouse scripts. Yeah, but see, cool. I, I don't ever. I, it's you know, it's been a long time since I've done a mouse script, so to me, it's not on the top of my head. But if you're in there <laughs> building all those things, it's yeah. always the first thing they're like, "We want an awesome notification email," and you're like, "All right, time to get back to coding." <laughs> well, but it's even yeah, it's like old school stuff too, because then you're oh man. I hate notifications. I'll just put that out there because yeah. you're, you know, email emails themselves are the worst to try to make look pretty because it's all, it's all IE six based or five based mm -hmm. <laughs> inline crap, and you're just like, oh, my head hurts. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you all next week. We got some fun things planned for the rest of the month, so stay tuned. Yeah. And we'll catch you guys soon. We'll see ya. Get a drum. Oh, perfect. That was the wrong drum. <laughs> and shout out to all of our commenters uh, yeah. here. Thank you for, for participating. We appreciate that. And, uh, hope to okay. see you again.